This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. Last week, we started the show with what we thought would be Tesla's official Q2 figures. But as we noted via an on-screen banner, the figures hadn't actually been released when we hit publish. Dropping less than a day later, they showed the expected drop in production due to COVID-19 lockdowns in Shanghai and parts shortages, with Tesla producing 258,580 cars and delivering 254,695 cars. But while that figure, as expected, was lower than Q1, Tesla's Q2 figures also relayed amazing news that show good things in wait for Q3. Namely that, according to Tesla, quote, June 2022 was the highest vehicle production month in Tesla's history, end quote. We don't have the figures yet, so don't know how much better, but we are hoping that we'll find out soon. I suspect it was big. Back in January, Winnebago Industries revealed its first all-electric motorhome in the form of the ERV electric concept. Based on a Ford Transit that had been converted to electric rather than a camper conversion of a production Ford e-Transit, the concept offered everything you'd expect in a Class B motorhome, but without burning a drop of fossil fuel. This week, the company confirmed that the fully functional concept vehicle successfully completed a 1,300 to 80 mile, that's 2,221 kilometer road trip. It averaged 53 miles per hour, 85 kilometers per hour on the road, and the trip cost 60% less to fuel than it would in a comparable gasoline RV. Winnebago said its team used the trip to get feedback from RVers at overnight stops and from EV owners at DC quick charging stations. Hey, Winnebago, when do we get to go? Tesla's supercharger network is still by far the most easily recognized and most reliable EV charging network in the world. And for EV owners in Europe with CCS compatible cars, it's been possible for a while to use Tesla superchargers to recharge your non-Tesla EV. But according to the White House, in a memo published last week, Tesla is going to be producing new supercharger equipment to enable non-Tesla EV drivers in North America to use its supercharger network. The announcement was made quietly last week by the White House in a statement on private EV charging investment, something we noted in a short short. But I'll admit we missed the supercharger shout out. Opening up the supercharger network to non-Teslas will require Tesla to install more charging stations in many areas to deal with sheer demand. But going brand agnostic will open the door to some serious federal funding. And frankly, only Tesla meets the reliability requirements currently set out by the federal government at the time of recording this. As cars have become safer and more safety technology becomes standard fit items in more vehicles, it's becoming more and more common to see new vehicles get five-star crash test ratings. But BMW's all-new i4 EV, a car we've raved about in our review earlier this year, has just received official Euro NCAP crash test results, and it only managed a four-star rating. That might put you off buying one, but as is quickly becoming the case with crash test ratings, it's not the the actual impact protection that was found lacking here, but safety assist technologies. The i4 scored 87% for both adult and child occupants, but managed only 71% for vulnerable road users, aka pedestrians and cyclists. Scoring 64% on its safety assist technologies, the car was marked as being only adequate in its automated emergency braking and occupant status monitoring. Still, it did do better than the 2021 Renault Zoe, and it's zero stars. On last week's show, we told you that Cruise, a wholly owned subsidiary of General Motors, had been given permission by California's Public Utilities Commission to begin fully autonomous robo-taxi service in San Francisco with paying customers on board. But as we learned this week via public data the day after Cruise was given permission to operate autonomous robo-taxi services, one of its vehicles was involved in an accident. As is often the case, the devil is in the details, and in this case, reports suggest that 
a fully autonomous cruise turned left at an intersection in front of an oncoming Toyota Prius. Cruz said that its vehicle stopped at the intersection before turning left and alleged that the Toyota Prius was speeding in a required right turn lane but then went straight through the intersection, thus hitting the cruise vehicle. Occupants in both vehicles sustained injuries, but until a full report is released, we really don't know which vehicle was to blame. We've been tracking the growth of electric bicycles over the last few years, and as we've detailed multiple times on this channel, electric bicycle sales are continuing to outpace plug-in hybrid and electric car sales combined. This week, a new study from Deloitte into German attitudes towards electric bicycles showed that not only are more people using electric bicycles over electric cars, but that electric bicycles have a higher perceived attractiveness over electric cars, albeit by a small margin. I don't have time in this show to delve deeply into the study, but you should totally peruse it at your leisure because it shows some interesting facts, like the median trip length by electric car that falls well within the third quartile of trips made by electric bicycle, and how, even though most people seem to prefer e-bikes to electric cars, only 29% of respondents actually commute using an electric bicycle. It's very interesting. Under current US federal tax code, only the first 200,000 plug-in vehicles made by every automaker are eligible for full federal tax credits. And as I'm sure many will now know, two automakers thus far, Tesla and General Motors, have gone past that limit. This week, we heard of the third company to cross the 200,000 plug-in vehicle limit after incentives ramp down and ultimately stop. Toyota, even though it's only just begun deliveries of its all-electric BZ4X in the US. The reason is that the incentive program also covers plug-in hybrids, and thanks to its Prius Prime and RAV4 Prime, Toyota's cumulative plug-in hybrid sales account for the overwhelming majority of its allocated incentives. Toyota's eligibility for incentives will ramp down in September. At the same time this week, we also learned that Ford is nearing its 200,000th vehicle limit, again, partly due to plug-in hybrid sales, but also due to its e-transit, Mustang Mach-E and F-150 Lightning. Ford hasn't quite reached its 200,000th vehicle limit yet, but it's expected to do that this quarter or next. That would mean its credits will begin to phase out early next year. Supporters of nuclear power often say that renewable energy generation methods such as solar, hydro and wind cannot make the electrical grid fossil fuel free without the help of nuclear power. But this week we learned that in the first four months of 2022, renewable electricity generation in the US accounted for a full one quarter of the nation's generated electricity. In April, for the first time ever, wind and solar power combined produced more power than all of the nuclear power plants in the US. Using data from the EIA's Electric Power Monthly report, the Sunday campaign crunched the numbers and said that solar generation expanded by 28.93% in the first third of this year, while wind increased by 24.25%. Hydropower also increased, but under 10%. Combined, all renewables outpaced both coal and nuclear power, showing that the grid just keeps getting greener and greener. Chinese automaker NIO held its second Power Day this week, and during the event we learned some pretty impressive things about the company's growth and future plans. According to the company, it's just completed installation of its 1,000th battery swap station. This one will be powered exclusively by renewable electricity. Just as Tesla expanded its supercharger network in its early days quite dramatically, so too has NIO expanded its swap stations, going from 200 to 1,000 locations over the course of 15 months. Claiming an average of 30,000 swaps per day, NIO seems to have figured out the swap market where others failed, and now it has its sights set on rapid charging too. Announcing its plans to build 800 volt battery packs in-house from 2024 onwards, the company will begin deploying 500 kilowatt DC quick charging stations across China and Europe this year, meaning even those who haven't opted for battery swapping can get back on the road as quickly as possible. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety has a long and trusted reputation for crash testing vehicles, and its lauded Top Safety Pick Plus award is a serious accolade for any new car. 
This week, the independent body announced the Hyundai Ionic 5 is the latest recipient of the award, earning good ratings in six IIHS crash tests, being available with a front crash prevention system capable of advanced or superior ratings in vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-pedestrian crash tests, and having a headlight system that's considered good or acceptable across all trim variants. Interestingly, though, the award only applies to 2022 or newer Ionic 5 EVs, as vehicles made before December 2021 have a different front seat that the IIHS states could, quote, affect the head restraint evaluation, end quote. It's great to see more and more EVs earning this top safety pick plus award. And even if you're in the market for a new EV outside of the US, be sure to check those ratings to see if your potential new car has it, as it's a really good safety score to look into. Before we go to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? Because if you are and you live in New Zealand, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all kinds of information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes everything from incentives you can get to charging providers you can sign up with and, of course, how to get zero emission charging at home. Follow the link below and start your journey today. If there is one thing that I have learned in the last few years since hearing Hyundai and Kia proudly proclaim at CES 2020 that they believe the future of automotive industry relied heavily on value-added services, aka in-vehicle subscriptions, it's that we've seen more and more companies make features that used to be free, things you now have to pay for. BMW has made heated seats a subscription service. Tesla has made online maps a subscription service. And Ford will happily charge you a subscription fee for using Amazon Alexa in your vehicle. And plenty of other automakers charge similar fees for similar things. But we've never heard of rear wheel steering being a subscription feature. Until now. That's because Mercedes-Benz is making the rear-wheel steering of its EQS electric sedan a subscription feature to customers in China. Sort of. You'll get four degrees or so of rear-wheel steer for free, but if you want that full ten degrees, you'll have to pony up extra money. We are against subscription fees in vehicles in general, but this one is most certainly evil. And finally, there's something of a trend in the automotive industry of taking a classic nameplate and turning it electric. Ford did it with a Mustang Mark E, and many other brands are bringing back classic nameplates for electric vehicles, either with new models or resto mods. Renault's doing it too, bringing back the iconic Renault 5 as an all-new electric model that we've swooned over several times on this channel. This week, however, the company revealed a resto modded Renault 5 to celebrate the car's 50th anniversary. Called the Renault 5 Diamant, it's an EV resto mod built in collaboration with Pierre Gonolas. And while it's certainly ostentatious and not the same basic perfunctory design language we loved from the original Renault 5, it's certainly different. And hey, if a classic car gets to live on as an EV, we are all ears. What we're not all ears about, though, is Renault's NFT campaign that has launched to coincide with this unveiling. Because NFTs, as far as I'm concerned, are just a get-rich scheme for those offering them and do nothing to make the world cleaner, greener, safer or smarter. So on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you do want to make the world cleaner, greener, safer and smarter, make sure you've switched to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. Next week, both myself and Michael will be in New York for the Formula E race there. So we won't be able to make our usual roundup show. However, I will be back with more awesome content very soon. And of course, so too will the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. And our next roundup show will be in two weeks time. So enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.